What's up, what's up, y'all? It's your boy AD, and I'm in the spot. How y'all doing? Today, we're doing yesterday's SmackDown review, and this was July 9th, 2021. And let's get straight to it. The headline says, Edge and the Mysterios aggressively repel Reigns in the Usos. And here we go with another crazy picture, boy. These pictures are getting wilder and wilder. Now, let me let y'all know that I got my stuff working back correct today. Because the reason why my Raw review got fucked up is because I had my stuff muted. And it's unmuted now. I can see it. So, yeah, that's why my Raw review got messed up. Last week's Raw was ridiculous anyways. So, eh. Y'all ain't missed too, too much. Too, too much. But SmackDown, honestly, I think was a little better or at least more interesting to me this week. So let's get to it. And yes, I got my coffee. So Roman Reigns brought his dangerous family back together. So remember, this whole Roman Reigns story has been kind of falling off a little bit lately. It was good for a second. Then it started falling off. Now, I guess you could say it's starting to get a little good again because, so, remember that Jimmy got jumped last week. Well, you know, got his ass kicked by Edge because he thought that Roman was going to show up. But Roman came back today or, like you know, yesterday and showed him was like, oh, well, I was too busy doing something that you couldn't do. And everybody's like, what was that? And so sure enough, he brought Jay Uso back. And remember, we ain't seen him in about, like, three weeks now it's been about three weeks and then and then basically now they're all together like one big happy family so this is the first time basically since they've been back the Usos have been back they also been cool with uh roman and but the sad part is they got to talk about tag team belts and all of this even though i don't see it happening and and then the look on Roman's face like tells it all. You know, his his look on his face basically says like, look, I manipulated you guys and y'all fell for it because I do believe this was a total manipulation tactic. I don't think this has anything to do with family like they're trying to say it do. I just think this is all just Roman's way to just keep y'all down and, and forever make him head of the table. So that was wild, man. It's some other little minor things that went on too or that I noticed, but I don't want to keep this video too long. All right, after that, King Nakamura defeated Baron Corbin in a Money in the Bank qualifying match. Now, here we go again where Corbin is just, I mean, they are really making it seem like his career is really going downhill. Like his hair is getting longer. You know, his beard act like he can't take care of his beard. He lost his car last week. He lost his crown. They acting like he's broke. He's always running around like he's depressed now. Like, it, it is just so crazy how King went from, like, a total badass to, like, now acting like he, his career is just over. And then he said it, too. Like, if this is my last chance to make myself worthy by going against Nakamura again, which we know is kind of boring because y'all been fighting way too much. Now, that I didn't like. But this was a qualifying match. And I was like, oh shit, is it his career over? And sure as shit, he lost, man. He fucking lost. Man, this dude, man, after the match, he he had a very, very just depressing look on his face, man. I feel bad for him. I think that's kind of what they want, right? They want you to feel bad for him, right? Okay. My bad about this stupid ass train. Um, but, um... Shotzi and Tegan Knox defeat Natalia and Tamina in their SmackDown debut match. Now, yeah, Bailey, I, I heard, got injured. I heard about this news yesterday before SmackDown came on. They said Bailey got injured and she supposed to be out for nine months. So we already are lacking a lot of women, female talent on SmackDown. We already, they already brought Zelina Vega back last week. Now, here comes two new ones, even though they're from NXT, and I heard that they changed their names, but they came out, and the first thing that came to my mind about Shotzi and Tegan Knox or Knox, I was like, this is like another Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan ripoff. I totally felt that. Like, I felt like y'all were like them, almost. Like, I didn't, I didn't see much personality or something new to them basically when they came in. I mean, it, I mean, I guess it was crazy them coming out on that weird ass tank. I, I guess that was kind of crazy, you know. 
And once I seen that it wasn't a title match, which is good because it really shouldn't be, I was like, I was like, yeah, they probably gonna lose just to put them over because SmackDown really needs some help. But now their wrestling skills, I, I mean, I'll give them a little props. They did come out pulling out some little nice little wrestling moves and tag team moves. It wasn't the greatest or the best, but I'll give them a little props for at least coming out there, you know, for their SmackDown debut and actually try to work something. On to the next one. Sonya Deville made sweeping changes heading into WWE Money in the Bank. So, yeah, Sonya came out. And that's when she announced Bailey was injured. Bailey shot a promo too, still talking mess. Liv Morgan comes out. Oh, oh, Sonya says that Carmella is gonna be. Well, it seemed like she was finna say that Carmella is finna be the next Money in the Bank or the next person to go against Bianca to take her spot. So Liv Morgan comes out, basically shoots the same pr promo she been shooting for the past three to four weeks. I'm like, this must be her thing now. That's what I'm thinking. Like, this must be her thing, interrupting people and just coming up in there like that. So, and she was basically telling the truth, though. Lil Morgan was telling the truth because she had been winning matches. She had been beating Carmella. It should be her. But then that's when uh, Morgan, I mean, not Morgan, but Sonya went off on Morgan and was like, well, I was going to tell you, you were going to get the money in the bank spot or some shit. Or, or I think she said she was going to replace him with Liv, I think. And then she was like, oh, no, but now you just get a qualifying match spot or whatever. So she basically got treated by Sonya and apparently was going to take Bailey's spot, but now ended up with a qualifying match spot. So she still has a shot at the title, though, but what a way to come in like that, though. I'll read a little bit of it. It says the EST of WWE got the final word when she addressed Bailey's injury and raised her title high. All right, and then Bianca came out right when Liv left out. Right, Bianca came out and she kind of flexed a little bit. I forgot about that after that happened. So that was wild indeed. But uh, I, I could tell that SmackDown is really going through some things with their women's division. It's, they really got to figure some stuff out. And now Bailey is injured. That just makes it even worse. Okay, then we have Seth Rollins defeat Cesaro in the Money in the Bank qualifying match. Now, this was crap, obviously, because here we go again. Why do y'all keep rematching the same people? I don't care. And then Money in the Bank just made it even worse because y'all just used a lot of those rematches just to put them in Money in the Bank. You know, I feel like this is one of the worst times for Money in the Bank to come around because y'all already got rematches stacked on top of rematches. I really didn't care about this match at all, to be honest. I mean, yeah, it may have been some good spots, but... And I had, and to be honest, I had a feeling that Seth Rollins was going to win anyways because... They want to put more heels. You know, they definitely want to put more heels and money in the bank. But, but a lot of people are saying that that kind of messes up Cesaro because, you know, he beat you at WrestleMania. I mean, he done a lot. Cesaro has done a lot against him. But now all of a sudden, Rollins just beat your ass and get in the spot. And now Cesaro doesn't have no shot. Okay, on to the what happened at the end. Because I guess you could say that was the main event. Right, it wasn't really no main event. It was a promo instead. But it says, Edge and the reemerging Mysterios took down Roman Reigns and the Usos. Now, this is what happened. So, Edge shot a promo earlier, talking mess. And he was like, look, I'm finna call them out. He was like, I'm finna call them out, man. I don't care if they back or not. Because the first thing that came to my mind was, man, they finna jump Edge. That's what I was thinking. I'm like, they finna jump them. Because now they all together. And, and you know, Edge, Edge has been raising hell ever since he been back. And then remember, Roman disappeared last week. So, it's like, what's finna happen? Because now both of them are on the show at the same time. So, you know it's finna go down. And then Edge went up there and he called him out. And then Roman came out. But before Roman came out, he told the Usos to stay back and don't help him. He said, stay back. So he went out there. Soon as he went out, the Usos showed up. I mean, <laughs> Roman didn't even get a chance to even get into the ring. He was almost at the ring. And then that's when the Usos showed up. And then that's when Roman got mad. Like, you could just tell he was pissed. He was mad that they showed up because he didn't want them to show up. So they came out 
up again. They was basically finna help him jump edge. And as soon as they was finna get in the ring, that's when the uh that's when the Mysterios popped up and with chairs. Both of them had chairs and just got the fucking the Usos up. They got the fucking the Usos up, man. They came in with them chairs, get, got sweet revenge, sweet revenge. And Edge and Roman just got the going at it. And I was actually pretty excited at this moment. I was excited because I'm like, yes, this is what I want to see. Yes, I want to see somebody get in his ass. And yeah, they was going at it. They was clapping, man. Edge, I mean, Roman was fighting back a little bit, but Edge was getting in his ass, though. He was getting in his ass, man. And then eventually Roman ended up getting out the ring. He he ended up getting out the ring and, and leaving. But the messed up part is he left the Usos, Jan Jimmy in there to pay the consequences. So yeah, that was that was such a crazy promo. It was so wild because he because as you can see, he put the chair thing in his mouth just like he did to them the other time. He did it to both of them twice he did it to both of them they did they did a whole replay showing it because it was wild and then he did it again and then he did it again and roman was sitting there the whole time just staring and not doing nothing and he took like one step it did look like he was finna step in and try to help for a minute but then he just stepped back and he did not do nothing and his cousins basically got embarrassed in the middle of the ring and he ain't do nothing, man. Well, what a way to end the show. What a way to end the show. And that shit was so funny because the mysterious. It's like Edge. It's like once Roman was gone, it's like Edge was doing all the work. But it was just hilarious to me how the Mysterios just kept grabbing them or holding them down. Like they were still helping. Like right here, you could see it. See, you could see Ray holding his legs down. Like they kept holding them down so Edge can come in there and just go off on them. Oh, man. I mean, this SmackDown wasn't... I'm going to rate this in the middle. It's pretty much in the middle, like a 3 out of 5 to me. It, it has some good promos. The Roman story and the Uso story is starting to get a little better now. But some of these matches and some of the stuff with the female stuff is not that great. But I guess uh, this will be the end of the video. So I had to get this one out here early because I know I messed up my last Raw review. But I will be back, you know, on Monday to watch Raw. Hopefully it's better this week because last week wasn't. So I hope y'all enjoyed the show. Hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and I will holla at y'all later. I will see you guys later. Peace out.